And then we can analyze uh, the results using this kind of equation. What do we get? Although he teaches engineering classes and chairs a bioengineering department that is consistently one of the top three in the nation, Xu Chen didn't start out as an engineer, but rather in medicine and physiology. My original training was not engineering. I picked up engineering um, midway in my career. University of California, San Diego, Professor Chen was born to be a scientist. He grew up in Shanghai and was a pre-med student at National Peking University, where his father was a professor of chemistry. His country and his family were at a crossroads. It was in 1949 when uh, Peking was, uh, now it's called Beijing, was under siege uh, by the uh, Communist uh, Revolutionary Army. If we had stayed in China, the later Cultural Revolution and all of these changes, uh, being intellectual, uh, my father would have run into all kinds of difficulties and uh, we may not, uh, myself and my brothers, probably wouldn't have the college education uh, that we were fortunate to get. Chen attended medical school at National Taiwan University. There he met his future wife, KC, who was two years behind him. After getting his medical degree, he faced a dilemma to do clinical medicine or research. After long and hard deliberation, I decided to go into physiology. And I came to Columbia University in this country to pursue my PhD degree. Two years later, Casey followed. So after I came to the United States, uh, she applied for an internship uh, in a hospital very close to the Columbia Medical Center. And uh, shortly after that, we got married. In 1967, 10 years after he received his PhD, Chen co-authored three high-profile articles in the journal Science with advisor Magnus Gregerson and others the subject, the deformability and aggregation of red blood cells. Chen joined the Columbia faculty in 1958 and stayed there until 1987 when he took an extended sabbatical to set up Taiwan's Institute of Biomedical Sciences. The Institute's faculty and staff went from zero to nearly 200 in just 18 months. So I think there were several thousand uh, such young scientists at least uh, to be uh, influenced by the introduction of new uh, technology and new concepts in biomedical sciences. Even before he left for Taiwan, Chen had come to the attention of Y.C. Fung and Benjamin Swifok, co-founders of the bioengineering program at UC San Diego. They were on the lookout for new faculty, especially someone who might eventually take over running the program from them. We just look over the whole country. I said, let's write down the number one person on your mind. He said, let's write it on the, in, in, in a piece of paper. It turned out the same name. <laughs> that name, of course, Xu Chen. It took almost three years from their first discussions, but after Chen fulfilled his commitment in Taiwan, he moved to San Diego. I regarded that as one of my real contribution to CSD. The year was 1988, and Chen became a professor of bioengineering and medicine. He brought with him a cadre of Columbia researchers, including longtime collaborator Richard Scalak, as well as two young investigators, Paul and Amy Sung. When the opportunities uh, opened here for us, we decided to come. He has a charming uh, personality and per persuasive uh, power. So um, people around him are very willingly uh, working together with him. We added a new dimension to the already strong bioengineering program, which had been strong in biomechanics and microcirculation because Dr. Spong and Zweifa are considered as fathers of these two fields, respectively. What we brought to here is the cellular and molecular approaches to bioengineering. Hello. In 1991, Chen created a campus institute and led the effort to win a $5 million five-year award from the Whitaker Foundation, one of only three that year, from a field of over 60 original proposals. The center was interdisciplinary, with an emphasis on tissue engineering science. It would eventually be renamed the Whitaker Institute of Biomedical Engineering. The funding allowed Chen to hire new faculty in the following year, 1994, to create a separate Department of Bioengineering, with Chen as founding chair, a position he holds today. We have made the great strides in uh, moving forward with our plans. Uh, to achieve the uh, goal of what we call integrative bioengineering. By that we mean we integrate uh, biomedical sciences and engineering sciences together. We integrate across the biological hierarchy 
from genes to molecules to cells to tissues, organs, and systems. In 1998, Chen led a second effort with the Whitaker Foundation and the Charles Lee Powell Foundation. They gave $25 million added to donations from the Von Liebig Foundation and other private donors to construct a bioengineering building that opened in late 2002. The powerful building gives us the infrastructure that will make it possible for us to realize our vision that is to pursue new knowledge in bioengineering, to train students, and to transfer technology from the laboratory to clinical and industrial applications so that we can improve the quality of life and health and well-being of our citizens. Since moving into the new building two years ago, Chen has hired five new faculty, including joint appointments with the UCSD School of Medicine, and launched a multi-campus research unit with the nine other UC campuses. Look how well he ran the our department here. He's starting new directions virtually all the time. And yet uh, to make the place so harmonious. He's really a great leader. Um, he sets very high standard for himself and for everyone around him. Publishing papers, educating students, um, or managing affairs in community, scientific communities, he always does. Great job. Indeed, even as he was building the UCSD bioengineering department into a world-class institution, ranked the number one PhD program in the country according to a National Research Council survey, and number two by U.S. News & World Report, Chen remained a prolific researcher. He is the author of more than 400 peer-reviewed journal articles and the editor of nine books. Since I came to UCSD, I have uh, focused on the effects on mechanical forces, that is pressure and flow, on the um, molecular events in the endothelial cells. How do the endothelial cells respond to these mechanical forces and modify their uh, molecular events? Uh, we call it signaling. How do they signal the genes to change their expression. As you know, when the gene changes their expression, the proteins will change, and the proteins are the major determinants of functions of the cells, such as growth, migration, and the program, the cell death, and so forth. So mechanical forces can govern these important cellular functions, and we want to know how do they achieve that. Chen's vision of integrative bioengineering positioned UCSD to build its reputation as a center of excellence in three major areas. So the first area we call the multi-scale bioengineering. The second area is tissue engineering, or a more uh, common term today is called regenerative medicine. You want to regenerate tissues for medical purposes. And the third area is systems biology. You want to build everything together as a system. That type of balancing act positions UCSD bioengineering as a force on new frontiers, including nanotechnology and stem cell research. In 2002, Chen was named a university professor, a distinction held by only 20 faculty members in the entire University of California system, and he has never lost his passion for teaching. Well, I think teaching is very, very important because uh, the uh, growth and development of any discipline depends on the next generation. Today, Chen is a member of the National Academy of Engineering, the Institute of Medicine, and Academia Sinica. His election to that organization in 1976 was particularly poignant because it happened while his own father presided over the Taiwanese organization. He was elected only after his father had blocked it twice over four years. That was the first father and son uh, membership uh, in the academy. Fifty years after becoming Columbia University's table tennis champion, Xu Chen now prefers a leisurely round of golf at Torrey Pines, a stone's throw from the house he shares in La Jolla Farms with wife KC. We've been happily married for uh, 47, going on to 48 years, uh, and this has been really the best thing that's ever happened to me uh, that I met her and married her. And she has been always so supportive of everything I do. And also we have two wonderful daughters. Uh, they all, both are married with their own wonderful families of three daughters each. In 1995, Xu and Casey returned for the very first time to mainland China, 46 years after fleeing. They returned to Chen's birthplace in Beijing and the family home in Shanghai. 
He gave lectures and accepted honorary degrees and invited young Chinese researchers to the U.S. To Mark Chen's 70th birthday in 2001, UCSD's Amy Sung produced a book of tributes from students, teachers, colleagues, friends, and family. An updated version was published by World Scientific Publishing in late 2004. The chapters are filled with superlatives and adjectives such as kind, generous, caring, compassionate, and more. I think beyond being nice, he's extremely diligent and considerate. He has his infinite capacity of absorbing all the inputs and uh, never appearing impatient, always digesting everything, and uh, came out uh, with, with a very pertinent and a very uh, satisfying final decisions which make everybody happy. And that's unusual. Whenever I give lectures on way of research and so forth, I emphasize the word people. And I emphasize the word heart or mind. In Chinese, interestingly, those two things, words are the same. It's what's in your mind, what's in your heart that counts. For his outstanding achievements in bioengineering and educating Asian American engineers and scientists, Dr. Xu Chen is the 2005 recipient of the Asian American Engineer of the Year's Distinguished Lifetime Achievement Award.